Hello, Russ Gosman here, and welcome to my video on workable tracks. And what do we see before us? Uh, a bunch of workable track systems from uh, Model Caston and Ryefield. We have the Ryefield Tiger tracks right here, and I have a set of Model Caston tracks for the uh, Stug 3-4. And, and this is this is the magic of the workable tracks. This is what gets everyone really excited about it. workable tracks is that they're workable. I mean, with all that articulation, they can just hang off your fingers like a, a snake. And they're very nice, very attractive tracks. Same thing here with the tiger tracks. You know, very, very cool stuff. All right. Um... What do I got to say that hasn't been said yet on YouTube? Not a whole heck of a lot. Um, I will say that when you're ready to commit to using workable tracks, you got to ask yourself a few questions. Um, one is, how many links do I need for the tank that I'm actually building? Now that's going to change. Uh, usually, um, the traditional kits... Uh, the companies will give you pretty good instructions. Model Casting, here's their box right here. They're pretty good about instructions with regard to Dragon and Tamiya kits, and they'll actually give numbers and specifications for how many links, and they're pretty much on the mark. Uh, Ryefield, we've got their box right here, and they're talking about 96 links for each side. We don't know if it's Tamiya Dragon or are they talking specifically about their product models. So the question or the advice I'm giving is you want to find out that number before you start committing to construction. The worst case scenario is, is you're going to overshoot your length and you're going to have too much track. And I have done that in some of my earlier works. It's a bit of a pain, but it's not a big deal. You're just going to have to snap off some links and fix your problem. Now you might be saying, oh my god, that's that's crazy, I can't do that. Well, sure you can. Um, most of these kits all come with a decent amount of spares. Ryefield's box, I got a lot of spares. Model casting will probably give you a good 10, 12 links spare. So, um, nothing to fret about. I'm just going to have to make the cut and snap. You may still have the, the original pins are inside, not a big deal. This is why we got files, right? File the, uh, the outer nub of your pin out, and then just get yourself a pin vise with the right diameter drill bit, and, and just pop the pin right through, and you got a brand new hole. And then you can reattach. So that's the worst you can do. I think with workable tracks. At least that's been my experience. So how do we avoid that? Dry fitting. Workable tracks are the easiest things to dry fit. Just slap them inside your chassis and take a look. Alright, it's it's that's the beauty. I mean it's such a an advantage over indie links. Alright? It's not gonna cause any problems to your model tank. Alright, so we talked about overshooting, dry fitting, getting it right. General construction of the tracks, yes, it's time consuming. I did my whole set of Tiger tracks. I usually, what I do, this is what I do, I, I have these segments. I just, you know, spend a, an evening or an afternoon and I'll just make my sets. These are sets, I believe, of 12 links and then when I got a full track length I'll put them together and then put in my guide horns um, to be honest I don't know how many hours I put into these if you're committed to this hobby and you love what you're doing about it um, it's not gonna matter the time you know, I did this over a course of a winter maybe an hour here two hours there on the weekends not a big deal Get yourself uh, some music. I listen to a lot of music when I build my models. Watch a movie. Watch a sports game. 
So, the idea that, that I'm trying to suggest is um, I did my tracks over a period of time, a, a long time, as opposed to just rushing it and, and just burning myself out. So, that's my advice. Maybe just stretch it out over a course of time period. Um, and that was that. Glue. What kind of glue do I use? I use the Tamir Extra Thin. Generally, I find this much more acceptable than using the uh, Tamiya Orange because that kind of, it's a very thick glue and gelatinous where this, you know, works with capillary action. Which some of you might be saying, well, that may tighten the track links. And yes, that's, that is a problem. You can, let's see here, what I would do is I'd glue it in. I only use a little bit. I mean, I really unload the brush before I dip it, I dip it onto the model. Just use a little. And to be honest, if some of the capillary action does work its way in, and it did happen a few places, um, you gotta massage these things. That's what I did in places that were stiff. I would just massage and flex the links. And that will really just sort of break up the bond if there's any in there. And just keep doing it. I mean, I just roll into little balls, you know, and just make sure it's nice and flexible not a big deal if for some reason that there's like some crazy nonsense that happens and you get like a huge like solidified piece well make sure you know, put them on the bottom that's a good place to hide it but generally speaking um, you should have some good flex the guide horns um, can be a challenge for me it was mostly just again time consumption um, what I do is I keep the nubs the sprue gates on when I cut them just as uh, Ryefield has their instructions I, I follow that I just put the I glue it just like you see it in the box let it dry overnight and then go by with my snips and I just snip all the little heads off and I found that that's probably a very good way to do it and as far as construction um, and strategy that was about it now let's look at the older kit. Say you want to um, work on an old Panzer IV testers slash academy. Uh, those are older kits. Uh, my only s suggestion would be to, you got to make sure the drive wheels and or idler wheels uh, fit the actual track lengths. Because, you know, the old some of, some of the older kits... The scale may not be accurate, and so that again, that's not such a. It's not as complicated as one may think. If you refer back to your Shepherd Payne books, um, you may have to put spacer blocks in your drive wheel system, or maybe you may have to shrink it down a little bit to make it fit into your tracks. So. That was really about it. So make sure length and make sure they're fitting in your, your drive sprockets. And just make sure you're having fun because this is... Uh, and keeping this fun can be challenging. That's why I listen to my music and watch Indiana Jones and Star Wars and Star Trek almost endlessly on my workbench just to kind of kill the time. Because uh, at some point you may say that you're, you're kind of going mad but I also wanted to share, uh, there's some other companies that produce workable tracks. we got AFE Club, and this is their uh, T16 tracks. I'm using it on my uh, Academy Stewart. And it's interesting, this system, they claim that you don't need glue, and you just snap the guide horns right into the, the track. So I'll be curious to see how, how that works out. We will see. And then these are uh, Kaizen. Kaizen tracks. This is more of your, they're very similar to foil tracks from Poland, your white metal tracks that everyone is just, it's the flavor of the, the era. Uh, I have yet to build foil tracks only because I find them to be a little expensive. And if people like Kaizen are going to be making tracks that are much cheaper, I'll just go that route. Um, but if anybody out there wants to donate some furrow tracks to me, I'll be more than happy to, um, use them. 
and their system is is a lot different. You know, model casting and your others. You know, these, are these little pins you glue in, but with the Kaizen and furl tracks, you know, you got the actual wires that go, and there's a socket. So literally, they they're pr almost accurate to the real thing. There's an actual pin. It looks like you gotta snip them as you go. So again, it's another process. You may have some questions concerning uh, flash and cleanup with these tracks. Um, not much flash. You might have a little bit of um, sprue gate trimming. I just use files. You know, I'll just file and clean away. Because you do want to make sure that there's no uh, buildup of styrene because, again, they're workable. And if you're working with, if they got sprue gate that's in between the links, that may cause issues with your articulation. And again, let's refer back to model casting. Uh, they come with some nice little extra detail. They're very sensitive to the fact that you're replacing the Dragon or Timia. And they're often going to supply you with extra idler wheels and a few things to... Um, fix some issues with the, the Tamiya and Dragon products. So that's about all I have to say with uh, workable tracks. They're great to work with and I look forward to getting these on. So next uh, what I want to talk about is I have a Tiger tank hence so that's why I have the Tiger tracks and I want to replace some GS tracks which no many people out there are not big fans of them, and I am certainly on that wagon. So what do I have today? I have a Tiger Tank. It's my uh, Michael Vittman Tiger uh, Cyber Hobby, and let's take a close look here. We got we got the DS tracks. They're nice and tight, and we're gonna we want to cut them off. So, let's take a look and see what we can do to remove them. Got my little snipper dues. We'll see if we can cut, cut them off. Feel like a surgeon. We're getting there. All right. So we're pulling them off. And let's see, how can I do this without breaking the model on camera? All right, that was easy enough, I guess. Wow, these guys are really tough. All right, there we go, we're off. Um, yeah, one thing I was really curious to see, I wanna see how bad, yeah, look at the, uh, the idler wheel. It's definitely was pulled. And you can get it really close up and see how much it, it yanked. Almost ripped it right out. Up in front, it didn't do much damage to the uh, the drive well at all. That held up pretty good. All right. One thing I wanted to check was track length. I have the uh, an unopened set of DS tracks, and the right field tracks are right here. Generally, if I line it up, looks like I'm about one track extra, or one link extra. So that puts me at uh, a little bit of an advantage, and I'm curious to see, because I have this track system set up at 96 lengths as per 
instruction from Ryfield. I just wanted to see how they line up. And then make sure I know what I'm doing here. And this is again the beauty of the workable tracks, because they're workable. So you can just feed it into the the machine. Because that idler wheel is all cockeyed, it may cause some problems. And then I'm already feeling it. Alright, I'm going to end up breaking something. It's jammed. So that's... Yeah, not a good idea. Wow. That's really pulling. Yeah, that idler wheel is bent, so I can't really put the tracks in. So what we're going to do is we're going to loosen it up. We're going to take a little bit of uh, styrene. I'm going to take the turret off, if you don't mind. I really don't like getting my fingers all over my finished model, but don't seem to have much of a choice. So yeah, let's get some, loosen up the, sk grease the skids, somebody would say, and see if I can get, sorry about that, you guys can't even see what I'm doing, just trying to get a little bit of glue in there, usually using a little, this stuff, um, it loosens up the bond of your glue. Just kind of let it sit there for a little bit. Probably can't imagine that bond is strong because it looks like it stretched it right out. Yeah. You can see it just came right off. There we go. Not a biggie. So as you can see, uh, replacing the vinyl tracks, at least in the case of this Tiger, not too big of a deal. So I think right now I'll just uh, get my file, file out some of the glue residue, and reinsert this thing, and then we'll work on the tracks. So we'll be right back in a jiffy. Alright, so we've filed out the uh, the insertion point, the male and female ends, filed them down, got all the glue residue out, and now we're going to reinsert the track. I didn't glue, and this is one of the reminders, while we're here, we might as well talk about this, but this is one of the things that may be a real point of disconcertment to some people is that this is the swivel arm you can see how it's swiveling in and swiveling out and I think if you're going to use these DS tracks you gotta swivel the idler wheel all the way in get as close to the wheel as possible to give you the maximum amount of flexibility with the DS tracks even though I don't think it's going to give you much because I had it pretty much in so that is a bit of a, a nuisance I think the DS tracks, aside from the fact that they're always coming bent, but if they were just a bit longer, it wouldn't be as complicated of an issue. I don't know why they keep making them short, because that's really the big the big problem. Alright, so now let's go back to reinserting.
Well, here we are. It took a little bit of uh, arm wrestling and leg wrestling, but I did get it in. Um, and definitely, what I did was the idler wheel has been swung almost completely all the way out. And with that, then my tracks at 96 links are pretty good. Um, if we can just, I can probably, I still got the articulation, it's just the gravity of the table working against me, but getting those tracks to sit aren't going to be a big deal. So at this point, the, um, the real trick now is the only wheel that's loose or free is the idler wheel. And as I was working on my Tiger II earlier this winter, my discovery was that um, you can't permanently glue the idler wheel prior to installation of the tracks. You got to keep them loose. And so the best way to do that is use a slow setting glue. And for me, that's Tamiya Orange. Put a little bit of Tamiya Orange, put it in, get your track that's been painted and ready to go, stick it in. Because that way you can control the swivel arm of the idler wheel and get the effect of track you want. And to close off the knot on the track is just to put in those pins. Um, in this case, I'm going to do it right at the bottom. That way it's buried. Uh, get a little bit of paint and just hit those pins when it's all set. And there you go. you got some nice uh, articulated tracks. This is a huge improvement to what I was using here earlier. Um, and you can see the it really set in motion. Um, and again, I don't want to make this video, this is not about bashing vinyl tracks. I have models that have vinyl tracks and uh, I use them when I can. And I take them to model shows and, and you know, I do very well competition wise. Um, it has nothing to do with the actual vinyl tracks. My biggest beef with vinyl tracks has been the manufacturers always make them too short. If they made them longer, it wouldn't be a problem. Um, yes, some of the old kits, like the old Tamiya kits going back to the 70s, the detail may not always be there. Um, but for me, that's that's just a personal taste thing. My issue is mostly just the length. If they were longer, they'd be fine. All right. Well, I hope this wasn't a complete uh, wash. I'll have to watch this video again and do some editing. But there it is. Well, thanks for watching this video, and I hope you got a few things about workable tracks from me, and um, you can apply them to your building. So I wish you well, and hope things are going well at your bench. Take care, and model on.